All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for a video keeping you informed on the crypto market every day. My name's Austin. With the Bitcoin halving fast approaching and the price of Bitcoin pump, pump, pumping, and now stabilizing above 9,000, there's still a lot of uncertainty in the air. Uncertainty for Bitcoin holders. There's fear that the $9,000 BTC price we're seeing right now, compared to the price we saw about a year ago, a $3,100 Bitcoin, this price increase was due to manipulation. People blame it on tether manipulation. People blame it on plus token manipulation. And this fear right now is causing a lot of good people to sit out on their Bitcoin position as Bitcoin continues to make new yearly highs leading into that halving. Well, watch today's entire video because I can prove that that manipulation narrative was a lie and I have new data showing actual accumulation over this last year, and I have the metrics to prove that this is real. People are accumulating Bitcoin right now. That's why the price is going up. Hit the like button, get this information out to as many people as possible, and like always, let's jump in. The problem with quantifying the number of Bitcoin users. A major question amongst Bitcoin researchers and investors has been that of knowing how many people actually own and use Bitcoin. And even though Bitcoin's entire transactional history, that's publicly accessible, right? It's an open public ledger. Besides that, assessing the number of actual users in the Bitcoin network has been near impossible. Hey, well, what have we been using? Well, down to the present day, it is most often still the number of addresses in the Bitcoin network that has been used as a proxy to the number of Bitcoin users slash holders. But what's the problem there? Well, the problem is Bitcoin addresses can hold funds for more than one individual, right? An exchange address could mean millions of users, yet it's only one address. Yet also a single entity can own and control multiple Bitcoin addresses holding BTC, right? You probably have multiple addresses. Well, now thanks to the research going on at Glassnode, which reads the on-chain intelligence, reads the blockchain, studies the metrics, very reputable in the space. Well, now we have a more precise estimate of the actual number of users on the Bitcoin network. At Glassnode, we have been working on this problem by applying a combination of industry standard heuristics, proprietary clustering algorithms, and advanced data science methods on top of raw on-chain data. So they combined all this to get to one result. And what were they looking for? Note that with our approach, we only aim at solving one of the two confounding factors that follows from using the, the, the issue that we talked about above, you know, exchange addresses versus one person having multiple addresses, that their approach only solved one of these two things that follows from using addresses as a proxy to the number of users. And that was mapping multiple addresses to a single entity. So they do not tackle in these metrics, they do not tackle a single addresses, a single address holding multiple users funds. They're not tackling the exchange addresses proxy problem. In this case, this data is mapping multiple addresses to a single entity. By the way, this information was introduced last night on our live stream. We had some beers, we talked Bitcoin, we talked big picture, a lot of fun. Check out this live stream if you haven't already. But let's get to the stats, right? Let's get to the charts. What were the actual results? Well, this first chart I wanna show you, this just covers new addresses versus new entities. So it doesn't account for total addresses or total entities. These are just new people entering the space. And again, the whole point of this is to quantify the number of Bitcoin entities. How many people are actually in the Bitcoin network, using Bitcoin, holding Bitcoin? Well, this blue line represents a chart that we've showed you before. This is how most people quantify how many people are in the Bitcoin network. And you see very bullish behavior, especially of new addresses coming on the all-time highs of 2017 but really very bullish address, new address behavior from the lows of 2019 to where we are today. Well, that's addresses. How about the actual new entities, the actual new users? Well, because our methods involve clustering addresses into entities, the resulting number of new entities noticeably represents a fraction of the number of new addresses in the network. So let's just look at this last year, 2019. And you can see, and again, this is not total, this is new entities, new wallet addresses coming into the space. 
but since the lows of 2019, it's up. We are up in new entities in this space, not as much as addresses, but new actual people is up compared to where we were a year ago. Now, what does this say? For instance, in 2019, the average number of new addresses added to the Bitcoin blockchain per day was over 355,000. That's Bitcoin new addresses. In comparison, the average number of new entities was only slightly above 100K, representing a ratio of about 28%. So I believe this says for every Bitcoin wallet address, uh, for every 100, 28 of those were actually new people. So what's the point? I mean, I'm throwing a lot of metrics your way. Just get to the point. What do I need to know as a Bitcoin holder? And again, stay tuned for the entirety of this video because we're gonna talk about Bcash. Hit subscribe. You do not wanna miss one of our daily videos keeping you informed on the crypto market. But to get to the point, and again, if you wanna read up on this whole data analysis, the link is down below in the description. Point is, according to our analysis, as of January 2020, where we are right now, the number of on-chain entities, real people holding Bitcoin, is about 23.1 million. Now, this is a drop in the bucket compared to what the world is. We are here early, we have a long way to go, and we were showing new addresses, new entities. If you wanna see total, number of addresses, number of entities, addresses in blue, entities in green, you can see the correlation is there. Obviously, many more people have multiple addresses over individual people. But what it comes down to is that this narrative about manipulation from Tether, the manipulation with, from the plus token scammers, I'm not invalidating that because this obviously happened. It obviously affected the price. What this new data from Glassdoor does invalidate, in my opinion, is the narrative that because the price of Bitcoin right now is 9000 coming off of uh, the $3,000 bottom that we saw a year ago. The people spewing that this rise in Bitcoin's price was unearned, it was too soon, we're having a massive correction down from here. Look at the data. It is simply not true. Look at the data. The data suggests that the Bitcoin network, the amount of users in the network is growing. Like the video, this channel will always bring you the actual data rather than just hype and speculation. But moving on, first piece of news involving Roger Veer's favorite altcoin, Bcash. Fearing revolt, Roger Veer's Bitcoin.com backs down from the proposed BCH mining tax. They are no longer doing it. Now, the primary reason that this got huge backlash, because it showed that a few central key players could collude and steer Bitcoin Cash in whatever way they wanted. Clear centralization. Well, according to a statement earlier today, January 28th, Roger Ver's Bitcoin.com is backing down from the 12.5% mining tax on Bitcoin Cash that they proposed along with other major BCH mining pools. And they did this because of the communi community's overwhelming negative response to the proposal. So what was the exact quote? Well, now Bitcoin.com has rejected the proposed mining tax unless serious altercations are made. So they're still open to it. Well, here's the exact quote. As it stands now, Bitcoin.com will not go through with supporting any plan unless there's more agreement in the ecosystem such that the risk of a chain split is negligible. So people were threatening to again split Bitcoin Cash into a new chain. Well, we think it's clear that the existing proposal does not have enough support, obviously. Now, the unfortunate thing for Bcash was, is that you can't put the centralized kitty cat back in the bag because people have already seen what the big players could collude and do to the entire Bcash ecosystem if they want. Now, my question to you is, and this is worst case scenario, what would keep the US government or the Chinese government, wherever these players were, what would keep them from dragging these few people into one of their government offices and say, hey, shut this down? I mean, some of you consider that FUD, but that's exactly what we're fighting against here. Yet, they're still looking for a solution to fund development in the Bcash ecosystem. They say, we will be working to come up with a plan that is profitable for all irrelevant parties and which preserves the fundamental economics of Bitcoin Cash. So we'll see. 
I'll keep you updated. That's the news for today. Again, check out the live stream we did last night. A lot of fun was had. Check it out if you missed it. And like always, I'll see you tomorrow.